Hello, everyone. Cool. Um, well, I'm super, super excited to chat with you all today. This is a quick look at the roadmap. I gave a longer talk about this at Phil Austin, and I'll give you a QR code for that if you want to go look at it in more detail, which dives more into kind of all of the individual milestones. Um, but I wanted to, to gather together my vantage point at some of the really exciting things that are coming up on the Filecoin roadmap, um, kind of from a project perspective. And to me, this really falls into kind of three main categories. Um, the first and foremost, which is super important to you know, Filecoin success, is the, the data capacity and onboarding on the network. This is helping new storage providers get onboarded, and this is helping make sure that clients can make use of Filecoin as a great store for their data long term. And so this is all about um, kind of the, the onboarding of useful data onto the network, and there's been a ton of work on this over the past um, year, honestly, and also a continued effort um, really helping make that a smooth and seamless process. Um, the next major chunk is around retrievability. This is making sure that it's really, I think someone had a question about how fast is it to get data that you stored in Filecoin. Um, this is a major additional focus as well, making sure that that process is um, really efficient and that it also connects to all the places that you want to retrieve this data. And so this is um, making sure that IPFS nodes can route to and find content stored by Filecoin storage providers and serve that over things like the IPFS gateways um, and use it to power their various different IPFS dApps. So there's been a chunk of work on this over the past couple of months and a lot of additional exciting milestones coming there as well. And then last but absolutely not least, um, there's been a major initiative over the past six months to bring FVM, the Filecoin virtual machine, um, to the network. Yeah, we've got some people from the FVM team here. You're gonna get another presentation on that later today, so I won't go into it, into it to, for too much detail. Um, but you know, this is super, super exciting when it comes to enabling a whole magical community of developers to build new capabilities into the Filecoin network directly, launching smart contracts and the, the initial milestone on, on that that will be launching actual user programmability um, will be all EVM compatible. So you can continue to use all the tools that you're used to, um, write your smart contracts in Solidity, connect to the Filecoin built-in actors to do things like automatically renewing storage deals from a smart contract um, and then launch those onto the network and, and build your own storage marketplaces uh, on top of all of the capacity and storage that Filecoin brings to the table. So we're all very excited about that. There's a ton of work going on, but let's jump into the roadmap part. So as you can see, there's a lot of things here. I'm not going to dive into the whole roadmap in detail, but you can see that the bottom portion here is all of the work to accelerate capacity and data onboarding. That's this whole blue blue section. There's a lot of work at the core protocol layer, um, making things like snap deals, which helped you um, onboard data into an already sealed sector in Filecoin so that you can much more quickly add large amounts of data to the 16, no, now it's 17 exabytes of capacity that Filecoin has onboarded in the past year and a half, which is just nuts. Um, there's also been a lot of work building new markets implementations like Boost, which is a new tool for both clients and storage providers to more efficiently onboard useful data and capacity. Um, and then also some new programs like the Enterprise Storage Provider Workshop, there we go, ESPA, um, which is an accelerator for new storage providers looking to get started to teach them all of the best practices about how to operate in this marketplace, which is different than traditional mining where you just you know plug in a box, leave it there, and hopefully it earns some something or other, and that's worth your cost of energy. As a storage provider in Filecoin, you actually have to offer a storage um, quality of service to your users, to your clients, um, and so there are significant requirements around that as well. So that's the most, most uh, major box. We'll dive into th a couple highlights in a second. Um, the green box is all around retrievability. There's been a ton of work happening here with the network indexer, which is a new content routing solution for both IPFS and Filecoin to make sure that we are indexing all of the CIDs, all the content IDs of data that's being added to, in Filecoin storage deals to data that's being pinned by pinning services in IPFS, and then offering very fast content routing to who is storing that data in the IPFS network or by, say, the Filecoin retrieval markets. And so that's launched in, I think, late Q2 um, and is now already indexed over a quarter of all of the data stored in Filecoin and is on its way to 100%. Um, and then finally, the top, the top group is around the, uh, all the awesome programmability and computation work. Um, we're very excited for the, the kind of next milestone of FVM, which brings around um, actual user programmability, launching smart contracts. And we have an ongoing early builders program and 
some more information to share about additional phases to that if you're looking to uh, build awesome smart contracts in Filecoin. Um, but this is really building towards not just being able to program the state of the Filecoin network, but also interact with the data stored in Filecoin. So you can start running things like machine learning algorithms over top of all of the NASA neutrino data that's now being stored in the Filecoin network, or all of the folding at home data that's also stored in Filecoin today. You can start running computation over that data, and there's a couple groups working on that. Um, so that's the high-level big picture. Let's dive in to three highlights of current milestones that you can be excited about and maybe start interacting with today. Um, so here are the three ones that, that I'll highlight and dive into in a little bit more depth. Um, the first one is the FVM M1 milestone, which actually just launched on July 6th. So the Filecoin mainnet is now running on top of the Filecoin virtual machine um, core components. We have not yet turned on user programmability. Um, we're still working on, on a couple bits of the, the security side of things and, and additional work on top. But this is now live um, as of the Skier network upgrade. Um, and this is now you know, running all of the um, actors of the Filecoin network is running on top of our Rust Wasm IPLD runtime. Um, and so definitely recommend checking this out. There's some, a couple of blog posts about the release, uh, recent release. Um, and also looking more into the FVM. If you go to fvm.filecoin.io, you'll see the full roadmap for what's coming in the short term future around FVM and can see how you can get involved there. Um, so exciting milestone. Big thanks to the, the whole FVM team for, for making it possible and a, a lot of continued progress here. The next one is Filecoin Saturn. I know this was mentioned just recently. Um, this is the, the V0 of Filecoin's retrieval market. There's a couple of different groups that are all building um, additional parts of the Filecoin retrieval market's problem. Saturn has now a live testnet with 34 nodes and is serving about uh, 10 million retrievals per day, aiming to, I think, about 50% of the times they serve content faster than the IPFS gateway. So that's, that's pretty good for a testnet that's still, still work in progress. Um, um, and they, you know, you can see really good geographic distribution of the nodes in, in this testnet. Um, and this is a, a screenshot of a dashboard um, where you have a specific testnet ID and you can see how many retrievals it's serving, how much Filecoin it's earning, um, I think just its speed of retrieval in that lower corner. We don't have high enough uh, visibility that we can see all of the, the core details. But really, really recommend you to check out Saturn if you're interested in potentially, you know, without investing in running your own data center and being a storage provider. Saturn is a great way where you can you know, plug in a server box. Um, right now, the, the um, version of Saturn that is live in testnet is focused on kind of slightly beefier L1 nodes with really good bandwidth connections, but also very well located around the world so they can offer you know, edge level CDN uh, retrievability to, to all of their users. Um, so definitely go check that out. They're publishing weekly situation reports, sit reps on all of the awesome progress here, and you can stay updated. Um, they have a, also a website as well. I'm happy to give people links um, later on if you're looking for them. Um, and last but not least, there's an awesome new program that's also focused on storage providers, but really around helping onboard client data. And so this is a new um, component of the accelerator programs in the Filecoin ecosystem. If you're an active storage provider um, and you've gotten really good at onboarding capacity, but you're still maybe learning the, the toolbox around how do you onboard useful client data at scale. Like when we're talking about petabytes and petabytes of user data, this isn't just, you know, great, plug in an Ethernet cable and you're done. Like, this is a significant onboarding experience of how you make sure that client data is treated responsibly, how you process that data, how you move that data from point A to point B, and how you replicate that data across many different nodes in the Filecoin ecosystem. Um, and so this, this accelerator program that's kicking off next week is actually a, a really, really great opportunity um, if anyone in the room is a storage provider and is looking to, to scale up their, their client data onboarding. Okay, those are the short-term upcoming, you know, next week sort of breakthroughs, but there's some really exciting breakthroughs in the works that are a little bit longer out. So these are more in the Q4, Q1 of next year time frame, but I'll highlight three here as well. Um, as you can see, at the, at the end of our roadmap, um, and first, you know, this is really what we're building towards with FVM is this compute over data. And there's a couple of different projects, actually more than a couple. There was actually a recent um, 
working group meetup where many different projects that are all working on different parts of the compute over data problem got together and shared their approach, where they're at, the, the progress that they've made. Um, two to call out here, Bacalao, or Bacalao, I can't pronounce it properly, um, is a, a group that's aiming to do machine learning workloads over IPFS data, over IPFS. Um, so definitely check them out. They have a really good wiki on their GitHub that really describes their approach and the progress that they've made. They're now doing, you know, job scheduling, I think hundreds of thousands of jobs, um, you know, have the replication and security across many different nodes and distributing that across IPFS. Um, so super exciting. And then there's also Lurk, which is a recursive ZK snark programming language for computation over data in Filecoin, which is pretty cool. They also have a really active Discord community if you want to get involved and start chatting with the people working on, on Lurk. I think they both also are on Twitter, so you can follow them there. Um, Next one after that, Threshold Encryption Network. Um, this is super exciting, and I think there's a couple of people in this meetup, maybe out in the other room, who are working on this. Um, Codename Medusa, if anyone's like, oh, Medusa, you're like, what the heck is that? Threshold Encryption Network. Uh, and so this is really harnessing the learnings from DRAND, which is the distributed randomness um, service that Filecoin uses so that we can you know, keep, keep our block time running smoothly. Um, and it's harnessing that and applying it to problems like distributed access control or um, all sorts of things where, where you want to be able to have private content and unlock it over time, um, or you, you want to have smart contracts that have like a, um, like a threshold being met or like a community that would evaluate whether or not you know, someone should get access to something, something like that. Um, building on a lot of the kind of core fundamental threshold encryption work that's happening um, and turning that into a live network that you can program against from like a smart contract. Um, so this would be, I believe, uh, in the works, would go live in Filecoin in Q1, which would be pretty cool. Um, and last but not least, um, it, there's a ton of amazing work happening, like as you can hear, lots of, of new capabilities being added to Filecoin, which obviously puts strain on things like um, blockchain capacity, chain capacity, or block times, or things like that. Um, there's some awesome work being done in advance of that around actually scaling the capacity in the Filecoin chain, um, and that's this hierarchical consensus project, um, which is kind of our our version of ZK rollups in a sense, um, which is how you can spin out sub chains within Filecoin so that you can have um, you know, computation happening within a data center that only occasionally checkpoints state back up to their parent. And then you can move state between different child chains and all sorts of really cool stuff. They have a lot of um, videos of the work that they've been doing that's on the, I think it's on the Protocol Labs YouTube channel. And so you can, can check it out there and see the, the awesome progress they're making. They're ahead of schedule. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to see this uh, come out as well. Um, and I think they're going to hit, they're aiming for testnet in like the end of Q4 timeframe. So a lot of, a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of progress happening. Um, but that's all I have for you.